15 popular fragrances. You'll get one or two minutes of in-depth but short review for each perfume and there will be also a ranking in the end so keep watching. If you want to see full in-depth reviews of these perfumes in this video I will link all those reviews in the description box so you can check that later after you finish watching this video. And welcome or welcome back I'm Miri and on this channel we talk in-depth about perfumes. So let's start with the first one and that is Elisab Elixir. The bottle looks so gorgeous on a dressing table and it exudes a glamorous feel and overall this perfume does smell very glamorous, elegant and classy. It opens with a citrusy mandarin and floral neroli so it has some bit of white floral washing powder vibe but then the scent becomes more ambery and powdery because of the iris. So imagine you put on a clean freshly washed and ironed white shirt and then you open your powdery makeup bag to get ready for the day. This is how Elixir smells in the heart and in the base it gets a bit smokier and darker. It lasts about five to six hours on my skin. It's a very sophisticated grown-up elegant perfume with an almost subtle 80s 90s vibe. I would rate its performance and scent with 6.5 out of 10. The next perfume is Givenchy's Lintedit Eau de Parfum and Lintedit is actually a perfume made in 1957 for famous actress Audrey Hepburn. In 2018 came out the modern Lintedit Eau de Parfum version that opens with a grape bubblegummy scent, like the scent of a grape skittles. As it dries down it becomes more floral but I can still smell that grape flavor from tuberose and bergamot in the open. Opening. This is the scent of flower petals in grape soda in some damp underground secret garden because of the patchouli that becomes more noticeable in the dry down but overall it smells timeless, elegant and just classy. It would be a perfect wedding day scent but if you're not very into floral fragrances or into tuberose you might find it a bit hard to wear it so you need to love flowers to enjoy it. On my skin it lasts between five to seven hours and what can I say this is eight out of ten fragrance. The next fragrance is Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb Tiger Lily. I was really looking forward to try this fragrance out because of the addition of mango and coconut. Initially, the scent is sweet, creamy and tropical with a splash of citrusy freshness so it smells like coconut shavings in coconut water with a few bergamot slices and it's really delicious and very soon florals take over and there is some spiciness a bit of creamy coconut from the opening as well while the base is enriched with this fruity notes of ripe mango so the dry down smells like you're wearing a flower necklace while enjoying a mango cocktail in some hawaiian bar and after the opening this fragrance isn't that sweet like other flower bombs are also it doesn't have as much patchouli as other flower bombs do and this is the most tropical flanker in flower bomb range also it has moderate projection and moderate longevity it lasts about six hours on my skin so overall i would rate its scent and performance with seven out of ten the next fragrance is dior hypnotic poison eau de toilette and this is a modern classic but be aware that the scent went through a lot of reformulations so it's not as strong and potent as it used to be but nonetheless it's a beautiful fragrance. It starts with the scent of bitter almonds that are very soon overpowered by creamy sweet vanilla and faint presence of coconut. So this smells like bittersweet almond milk with a few shredded coconut flakes but with time coconut fades away and this becomes a play-doh-y creamy almondy vanilla similar to a flavor of almond croissant. This fragrance is hypnotizing because it has a comforting and lulling relaxing effect. You just you just want to snuggle because it's so cozy, comforting, pillowy and soft. On my skin it lasts four to five hours which is pretty okay for eau de toilette concentration so overall for its scent and performance hypnotic poison eau de toilette gets 
8.5 out of 10. And the next fragrance is Ormond Jane Babylonia, which was inspired by one of the greatest capitals of ancient Mesopotamia, Babylon, known as a home to hanging gardens, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Babylonia is truly like a fruity cocktail in the opening. It smells like you're tasting black currants while drinking tea, and then the scent develops into a more powdery, velvety floral scent. Praline in the dry down gives a bit of chocolatey flavor, so the dry down smells like you're eating chocolates while lying on this velvety, powdery, fluffy rug on the violet terrace somewhere on the hanging gardens. This is actually a very sweet fragrance that is aromatic and fruity in the opening and it finishes with a powdery gourmand base. It lasts about 7 hours on my skin and I would rate its scent and performance with 7 out of 10. The next fragrance is Theory Muggler Alien Goddess Supra Floral and this is a very interesting new addition with prickly pear and cactus which is a rare nude in perfumes. The scent is initially very bright and fruity with some greenness and some bits of jasmine so the opening smells like jasmine petals floating on top of pear and grape juice in a bowl. And in the heart, you get a combination of roses, jasmine flowers and grape lollipop and then the scent finishes with this soapy shampoo vibe. This isn't a super floral perfume so don't be misleaded by the name. It's fruity and floral, it's sweet but it also has some freshness and bits of greenness and I think 85-90% of people will smell the and think oh this is such a pretty fruity floral perfume with uplifting freshness. It lasts about five hours on my skin and it smells like jasmine in a fruity cocktail and I would rate its scent and performance with 6.5 out of 10. The next fragrance is Yves Saint Laurent Lib Le Parfum and this is a very popular fragrance that starts citrusy like most Lib perfumes do but also spicy so the opening reminds me of ginger saffron rice drizzled with a few drops of squeezed mandarin juice on top. Very soon after you can smell lavender with orange blossom and vanilla so the dry down is amazing. It's smells like ginger cookies on the table in the garden next to lavender and orange tree blossoming. Addition of spicy ginger and lavender make this a very unique sweet orange blossom scent on the market and the scent is truly intriguing. It's perfect for the chillier season. It's sexy, domineering and sensual perfume because of the amped up vanilla in the dry down. It lasts about seven to eight hours on my skin, so I would rate its scent and performance with 8.5 out of 10. The next fragrance is Lancome's La Vie Belle and Rose and this is now discontinued because the new Rose Extraordinaire came out but you can still find it online so if you like this scent hurry up before it's gone. The rose in this fragrance is a bit deceiving because the rose you can smell is actually a combination of ripe berries and black currant leaves. To me this fragrance smells really good because you have this cheerful sparkling opening of raspberries in bubbly champagne and the dry down is very floral and sweet. It smells like raspberry Turkish delight decorated with some mint leaves because you get some fruits, a bit of greenness and something very cool and cold in this fragrance as well. As an eau de toilette it lasts um, for five hours on my skin which is okay. I do like the scent and I would rate its scent profile and performance with 7 out of 10. The next fragrance is Yves Saint Laurent Black Opium Over Red. This new 2024 addition to the Black Opium range is infused with the addition of cherry, a very popular note in fragrances. So in the opening you get a combination of sweet syrupy cherries with tangy bright citruses. It smells amazing and as the scent dries down cherry and black tea are somewhere noticeable in the background while on forefront you get coffee, vanilla and jasmine so this smells like 
coffee latte with an added shot of cherry syrup. Black opium over red changes from citrusy syrupy cherries at the top to the scent of cherry infused latte and it finishes with deep creamy vanilla with hints of coffee. It lasts about five hours on my skin unfortunately but I love the scent. This is the original black opium with a good shot of cherry. So this is a very seductive fragrance and I would rate its scent profile and performance with 8 out of 10. And now let's move to next fragrance and that is Alexandra J Oriental Enigma. This fragrance is very expensive and it comes in a stunning hand-blown bottle with gold details. The scent is just as detailed, just as luxurious and complex as its bottle. The opening is bright, boozy, nutty and just slightly sweet. So imagine somebody put a few hazelnuts in the rum glass and then sprinkled everything with powder. This is the scented opening and then it turns very floral, a bit spicy, boozy, powdery, while the base is it's just so cozy and smooth, but it never turns into a real gourmand perfume, despite having dates and hazelnuts in the notes. The entire fragrance is incredibly balanced, and even though it's compared to Angel's Share by Killian, to me, they are not really similar. And if you want to hear more about this perfume, if you want to see what are the differences, similarities between Angel Share and Oriental Enigma, check out the in-depth review in the description box. On my skin, Oriental Enigma lasts about six hours. And even though it is a unique fragrance, because of the price and a bit softer projection, it gets 6.5 out of 10. The next fragrance is I Profumi di Firenze, Vanilla del Madagascar and this is just as the name says, a beautiful vanilla fragrance that opens with vanilla and some floral and green touches, like you're smelling a pile of fresh vanilla pods split open while there is some light breeze carrying the scent of green grass from the distance. In the dry down, the scent becomes a vanilla custard on my skin. It lasts up to seven hours and it's just so creamy soothing and cozy. Yes, you can wear it on its own, but I do think it would be a great layering perfume as well because it is, for the most part, a one-dimensional vanilla fragrance that smells just delicious. So it could be also described as the scent of Oreo cream filling and I do like it. I would rate its scent and performance with 7.5 out of 10. The next fragrance is Upaï de la Fleur d'Orange Neroli Blanc Intense and the name means white neroli and it was launched a lot before all the orange blossom hype started with Killian's Love Don't Be Shy and in my opinion this fragrance is under the radar. It opens with the scent of honeyed orange jam and throughout the wear Neroli Blanc Intense is very sweet thick and syrupy orange blossom perfume. It's much more for gourmand lovers than it is for floral perfume enthusiasts. Orange blossom here is candied and drenched in honey and vanilla, so the scent is rich and delectable. It lasts about six hours on my skin, but it projects only for like first hour or two. And if I compare its scent, it would be most similar to Perfumes de Mali Safanade, but it's like half the price. So it's less expensive and I would rate its scent and performance with 8 out of 10. And now we move to Chloe Nomad Nuit de Egypt, and this new nomad is dedicated, as the name suggests, to Egypt, the country of origin of Gabby Agion, the founder of Chloe. It starts with citrusy, honeyed, and soapy soda like scent, like you're smelling creamy soda with orange extract and a Bed of ginger. I was expecting more mir, more balsamic notes, more spiciness, but they're not very prominent. Basically, this is a very pretty honeyed orange blossom scent with some ambery warmth and jasmine. It has a solar vibe as well, so it smells like 
like you're eating dates while wandering on the streets of Alexandria while wearing a white dress and a straw sun hat with a beautiful white floral bouquet in your arms. It's very pretty. I do enjoy this fragrance, but it's not as bold as the ad suggests it would be. It lasts about five to six hours on my skin. So overall, I would rate its scent and its performance with seven out of 10. And now we go to Clive Christian E Feminine. And this fragrance belongs to Private Collection, where each perfume is named after one letter and combine those letters form the name Clive. The opening smells like the scent of blackberry bush, you know, with leaves and blackberries, but that fruitiness from the opening becomes more floral in the heart. I can smell some roses and some powdery lipsticky scent from iris and also some woodiness from the base. So imagine an aristocrat from Jane Austen era with roses on her woody dresser putting makeup on. This is how I for a woman smells to me and it's very elegant, classy, sophisticated, luxurious fragrance that smells expensive and it lasts up to eight hours on my skin. So overall for its scent and performance, I would rate it with seven out of 10. And the last perfume for this video is BDK's Passisoa Extra. It comes and just stunning dark green emerald bottle. And the opening revolves mostly around pear with some cocoa dust and bits of pepper. While in the heart, Passisoa Exa has stewed marmalade fruity scent with jasmine and noticeable patchouli. It smells like a bouquet of patchouli leaves and jasmine flowers next to spiced poached pears. I really like how it smells and mostly this is a combination of juicy syrupy pear, jasmine and patchouli with some other facets. I get between like six and eight hours of wear so yes longevity is a lot better than with the original Passasoa and Axa is deeper and more carnal version of the original because you get some bits of like dirty deeper darker patchouli so this is also a bit more unisex compared to the Eau de Parfum. And what can I say? I do enjoy it. I would rate its scent and performance with 8 out of 10. This is it. 15 short but detailed reviews of 15 perfumes. And if you like the video so far, then boop the like button, hit the notification bell and subscribe for more content coming up. And now here's my ranking. On the fifth place with 6.5 out of 10, we have Alexander J. Oriental Enigma, Theory Muggler, Alien Goddess Superfloral and Elizab Elixir. There are several perfumes on the fourth place with 7 out of 10 and those are Ormond Jane Babylonia, Lancome's La Via Belle and Rose, Victor and Rolf, Flower Bomb, Tiger Lily, Chloe Nomad Nuit d'Egypte and Clive Christian E Feminine. On the third place with 7.5 out of 10 is one perfume and that is I Profumi di Firenze Vanilla del Madagascar. And now it's getting interesting on the second place with 8 out of 10 is Givenchy's Lintedit Eau de Parfum, Yves Saint Laurent Black Opium Over Red, then BDK's Passesoa Extra and Au Pays de la Fleur d'Orange Neroli Blanc Intense. And that means that on the first place with 8.5 out of 10 are two perfumes and those are Christine Dior Hypnotic Poison Eau de Toilette and Yves Saint Laurent Lib La Parfum. And keep in mind that this is just my personal ranking based on how these fragrances smell on my skin and how they perform. Sometimes performance truly determines the final rating and where on ranking scale some perfume will be, but all perfumes in this video smell very pretty. So let me know in the comments which ones are your favorites. Subscribe and follow so you can be notified for more content and especially when another episode of this unfiltered video series comes out. And if you still haven't checked the previous episode of this video series, then check out this video next. I will see you there. Bye!